of Terrence Crawford has a brand new opponent, formidable to fight. Hopefully this gets made. Oh yeah. And this guy also beat Terrence Crawford in the amateurs. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also, subscribe to my channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo donations, the Cash App, and the Patreon family. We working. Now, head over to Patreon. I got some new stuff, and you don't want to miss it. So, I'm working behind the scenes on some stuff for the Patreons and also for YouTube channel members so you can go to patreon link in the description or hit the join button on youtube to become a channel member and another great way to support the channel is to click the link espn plus and i'll talk about that more in a second now let's get into it you guys clicked in the video and there's a new opponent that's kind of on the radar at least to me i think it's a great fight and i want to go over what was said so as you guys know pbc has been doing things to keep the fighters in the limelight during this pandemic they did an interview with Guillermo El Chacao Rigandao, as well as, you know, podcasts with Wilder and Errol Spence and, you know, Instagram lives with Jermail Charlo and stuff. So one they did recently was with welterweight Cuban, your Dennis Yugas, who is a terrific fighter. And you guys see him on the screen. He's an Olympic bronze medalist at the 08 Beijing Games. You know, I've seen him several times in person year round. Like I'm talking about when it's not even his fights and he's he looks like he's in shape so he has a lot of experience a lot of people even thought he beat sean porter who gave errol spence a very tough fight so sean porter is a formidable guy and i really think actually myself i think i think he beat sean porter it was very close but i think he one of the parts he started off a little bit slow and the other issue is they didn't give him credit for a knockdown i think he knocked down sean porter sean porter's gloves basic or his glove basically touched the canvas and the ref for whatever reason didn't rule that a knockdown but i i think you guys got that fight but he's saying he wants smoke with terrence crawford on the facebook live that they did for pbc here's the direct quote that you guys see on the screen and this is what you guys had to say i am one of the few fighters that fought this year already and when boxing comes back i will be back and i want to stay active me and terrence crawford we fought in the amateurs and i beat him 27 to 10. i think that is a great fight terrence crawford is one of the best fighters in the division and so am i so it would be a good fight you guys was also asked to give his top five in the division and then this is what he says he says you guys errol spence crawford and manny pacquiao keith thurman so he said he puts himself up there and he puts Crawford, Spence, Pacquiao, Keith Thurman, which should be pretty much everybody's. And, you know, you could add Sean Porter or Danny Garcia interchangeably. Listen, I would love to see this fight. I also think that this particular fight is better than a lot of potential options that Terrence Crawford has with top rank. Now, one of the worries that people have for Terrence Crawford was the fact that he re-signed with top rank. And they thought in doing that, they thought that kind of limited his his options and limited his um you know potential for some of the bigger fights so with him signing to top rank that's his business if you know that's what he chose to do and that's what he decided but at the end of the day it, it left people feeling that terrence crawford possibly wouldn't get some of the bigger fights that he was after you know by having that happen this is a good picture too so Terrence Crawford, he's kind of ran through all the people that he needed to in terms of competition that was already kind of linked to top rank, like Duco Vince and Jeff Horn, who had done business with top rank. Also, fighters like um, Jose Benavidez. He already beat these guys and he beat them all by stoppage. So it's hard to imagine Terrence Crawford fighting somebody that 
is levels below some of these guys like Mean Machine. He he gave Crawford a tough fight, but the it was inevitable in the end. Crawford was just too good for him. And Crawford had some issue early, but he figured it out like he always does. And he got it cracking and he ended up beating. He ended up beating him. So to be honest, Crawford is in between a rock and a hard spot because he's too good. And you got to put him in there with somebody that the public believes at least has a shot. That's why people want to see the Errol Spence fight, which I think people are kind of rushing that fight. You know, we've waited years and months and all types of stuff for certain fights to come about. I think that fight, it doesn't really, Derek James kind of hit the nail on the head. I don't think it represents the peak value in terms of a business. Yeah, for, fa for the fight fans, it's a great fight. But it doesn't represent the peak value in terms of business. You know, two networks working together, PBC and um, Top Rank working together. I don't think it's a monumental fight. You look at Wilder versus Tyson Fury, who already had a first fight and they had history together. And that particular fight, it only did, you know, about a million, a little bit over a million. And that's with everything, digital numbers and stuff like that. And they promoted the hell out of that. They promoted on the Super Bowl, on the NFL playoffs. And they had a great promotion, even at gas stations, they had billboards, gas stations had like um, Wilder Fury 2 posters, things like that. So that's a fight. And it was a rematch. It wasn't the first fight. So you have to imagine Crawford and Spence where they're at right now. Would that really be and do the numbers that people expect? I don't know, you know, so especially with this pandemic i don't know what's going to be next and i don't foresee it's going to be some of the bigger fights right off the bat i think you know it's just too much going on with the pandemic people want damn you guys looking good you know you guys looking real good <laughs> you guys is a beast this is a great fight i'm telling you crawford versus you guys is a great fight look how he's in shape you see him through the compression like bro he's in shape all the time he has amateur pedigree and he already beat crawford he says so I, I, I hope somebody got the the you guys fight with Crawford from the amateurs because I would love to watch that now just to learn from both. But back to what I was saying, Errol Spence, Crawford, I think they can continue doing what they're what they've been doing and build that fight a bit more in terms of the financials to make it worthwhile. So I think Crawford go through guys like you guys because he's a mandatory for Errol Spence, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So. If Crawford could beat him, which is a, a revenge fight from the amateurs, that's a testament. And it gets him off of Errol Spence's plate and things like that. And it, it kind of sets up the unification. Meanwhile, Errol Spence, he could rematch Sean Porter. He could fight Danny Garcia or Manny Pacquiao. Pretty much the guys he, he was saying that he wants to fight. So all in all, I think any way you slice it, you guys is a worthy opponent. I, I liked his work on the Pacquiao Thurman card. I went and covered that fight for you guys. He beat. Omar Figueroa and he beat him bad like nobody beat Omar Figueroa quite like that so I thought that was a very good performance from you guys and how he handled Figueroa who's normally durable game you know a voluminous puncher and really rugged and he showed superior boxing again you look at the Sean Porter fight some people would really say that you guys should have been um, given the victory in that and that was Sean Porter's fight right before the Errol Spence fight and I think that's why some people thought that Sean Porter was going to get ran through by Errol Spence because they're looking at what the hell they're looking at his last performance and he fell through the thing <laughs> they were looking at his last performance which happened to be you guys right beforehand so let me know what you guys think I think it's a great storyline especially with the amateur victory that you guys has over Terrence Crawford and you know he, he needs a big fight I think he's deserving of that he fought and stopped uh, Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson's another guy, um, not the real, you know, the first Ray Robinson, but the Ray Robinson that fought you guys, he beat Crawford as well as the amateurs. However, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to put a lot of precedence on amateurs because guys get better, you know, just because something happened in the amateurs doesn't mean it's, it's definite and it's guaranteed to happen in the pros. It's just a matter of, um, you know, how the fight plays out and, the condition that both fighters have kept themselves in and what they've learned and the echelon of competition they have fought since the amateurs, you know, just what you learned. That's like, just because you beat LeBron game 
or excuse me, just because you beat LeBron James in a game of 21 when he was in high school, that don't mean you could do it now, you know, because LeBron James, look at all the experience. There's no duplicate. There's no duplicate for experience. You can't just take that away from somebody. So it'd be good to see Crawford versus a guy like you guys to see what guys have learned in the interim. I actually think it's a better fight than the Kell Brook because Kell Brook, you know, he just had some recent performances that weren't good. I don't think Crawford would get too much credit. Stylistically, it's, it's solid, but he's not going to get that much credit because Errol Spence already beat him by stoppage. Golovkin beat him. And then Kell Brook hasn't really done nothing. And we don't even, you know, he's in between 47 and 54, things like that. So if you beat you guys who looks to be a lot more in prime and, you know, has a he has losses as well, but he looks he looks like he got it going on right now. Like, you know, what I'm saying it looks like the, this is the best he's look. He's looking sharp. And I think Crawford, he's he would be in there with the guy. Just a lot of the Cuban fighters are just difficult anyway. They they, they have a ton of knowledge and um, training. Even the guys that are more aggressive, less aggressive. They all seem to have the basics of boxing and the fundamentals let me know what you guys think highlight those links in the description box but i think it's an excellent fight let me know what you guys think terrence crawford versus you guys or is there another person you would prefer let me know highlight them links espn plus get the bundle all that good stuff smash the like button if you love what i'm doing as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego Signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.